This might be the most emotionally challenging video I will ever have to make. A few months ago, I posted a video about foreboding joy and gratitude where I talked about my cat, Kitty. But when I recorded that, I had no idea she was sick. I knew she was old, but I just didn't know she was sick. By Christmas, we found out she had elevated liver enzymes. By the end of January, we found out she had lymphoma. And we spent the first two weeks of February trying to make her have the best last days that she could. Her life was so meaningful and had such a profound impact on not just me, but my friends and family too. Oh, and we can't forget the clients. She did so much therapy. I can't tell you how many sessions she sat through. So in true Kitty fashion, I present to you grief. What I tell my clients, myself, and maybe how to process it. I started this whole video by telling you what happened, and I think that that is the first thing that my clients usually need to do. It's also the first thing I needed to do when my Nana died, or this time when Kitty died. Don't be afraid to tell the story. You might need to find a grief group or a therapist that can really listen to you and not interrupt whenever you're telling the story. And you may find that you need to talk about it more than just once. This is because you may not get to say everything you wanted to the first time. It may be unbearable to talk about. You might even have to talk so slow that it doesn't seem to get the story across. Or talk through bouts of sobbing. And that's okay. This may sound silly, but one of my favorite gifts for people who are grieving is premium tissues. I want to be careful here um, and not be exclusionary. Um, just because you're grieving doesn't mean that you have to cry. However, if you feel the need to cry, it can be very stress relieving, so I don't suggest holding it in. Now that we've talked a little bit about telling your story and crying, let's talk about the stages of grief. I'm sure you've probably heard of them, but I usually have to go back over them with my clients. Most people know there are five stages of grief, and they are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. People don't always know what each of those stages look like or what they mean. They also don't know how to go through the stages or that there's actually a sixth stage. Denial is when you think, this can't have happened, I don't believe it. It's almost as though you're in shock. Anger is a feeling that many of us are acquainted with. However, we don't always know what that feeling is about. I like to tell my clients that the purpose of anger has three parts. The first reason that we get angry is that something is unjust or unfair. The second reason for anger is that um, it motivates us to change something um, because if we're not mad enough about something, we won't do anything about it. And the third purpose of anger is if we're not in a place that we're safe enough to be vulnerable and let people know we're not okay um, and we're sad, then we will get angry instead. Next, we have bargaining. That looks like asking the universe to take me instead or praying for it to be different, um, that you'll change your ways if only they'll come back. Bargaining is a either-or mentality where you want it to be you instead of them. After that is depression, um, which is like a deep sadness. It can come with feelings of hopelessness or worthlessness. During this stage, appetite may change. And then in what used to be the final stage of grief, we call acceptance you start to feel like things are going to be okay and you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I said earlier that there's actually a sixth stage of grief and that stage is meaning making. That's where you take the loss and you create something meaningful out of it. You come up with a reason why it happened for yourself. Maybe you use it to motivate you to do something new or different with your life. 
With Kitty, I'm using it to teach about grief. I could have talked about grief at any point, um, but it's so much more real when you're going through it. One thing I will say about grief is that people think that you go through the stages one by one, like you start in denial and you end up in purpose and meaning making. However, that's not really how it works. Um, you actually go through the stages and you sort of get tumbled around like you're in a pinball machine. On that note, one of the kindest things I ever heard um, was I had asked another therapist, Thomas Adams, how do you get through this after my Nana died in 2018? And he told me, it's like preparing for a storm when you live in the Midwest. Like maybe you just moved there and you've never been in a storm before. So you didn't buy extra water and you don't have any knowledge of what's going on. So you didn't, you didn't get ready for it. And so the storm comes and you lost your house or your power, all your clothes, and you don't have a storm cellar. So it was devastating. But the next time that there's a storm, you are more well equipped. You buy the water and you maybe evacuate if you have to. Um, but you just know how to handle it a little bit better. And so maybe things still go really, really bad. Maybe your house floods or um, maybe you lose your house again. But this time you at least had a storm cellar and you had enough water. Um, maybe you forgot the food. And so again, the storm comes, but the next time you remember to buy food and you went to your shelter or you evacuated because you heard how bad the storm was actually gonna be. And so each time the storm is still going to come, but you know how to prepare and you realized that you made it through and it was bad, but you made it. And that was probably the thing that got me through my grandma's death in 2018 and it was it was hard but it helped me remember that I was going to be okay when this happened to Kitty this year. One of the other things I talk about when discussing grief is what happens to someone when they die. Obviously this is unknowable and there are so many different traditions surrounding the idea of what happens. With Kitty, I believed that she would help me pick another cat. She would lead me to the perfect cat for our family. Obviously, no pet is replaceable, but many of us will get another pet in our lifetime, even if we've lost one. So this next part's going to be a little bit different for if your pet dies versus if your human family member dies. I noticed myself starting to Google, when is it too soon to get another pet? And I, I realized that everybody processes their grief in their own time and has to figure out how long it takes for them to be ready to get a new pet. This is similar to how we process grief with humans though, because there is no set point or set time for how long it's going to take you to grieve your human loss. Something that I'm so grateful to have experienced when my Nana was alive was how she taught me to experience grief. She lost both of her parents when she was really young she would continue to tell stories about them, even the same stories over and over again. Those stories kept my great-grandparents' memories alive and taught me that you're always going to feel a little bit of pain when you think about them even 70 years in the future. But that's okay, because grief is the price of love. It's like going to a restaurant where there aren't any prices on the menu and at the end you get the bill and you're like, oh no. For me, I would keep choosing that restaurant over and over again. And I did choose it again. <laughs> 
Her name is Olivia. I truly believe Kitty helped me find her. Thank you so, so much for watching and listening to my story. I hope that you learned something about grief. Please make sure to take care of yourself and if you need to talk to someone, reach out to a therapist or find a support group. And if you're grieving, I'm so, so sorry for your loss. This video was obviously about the death of a loved one, but if you would like me to make a video about loss of a relationship or a job or other types of loss and the grief that comes with that, please comment below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see y'all next time.